Hi, I'm Beth Lynch, and my dear friend Sherry has mentioned me a couple times, so I think we thought it was uh, nice if we shared a couple stories about her daughter Nicole and myself, and I am a medium, and I am very sensitive to the thoughts and feelings of the spirit world, and unfortunately I've had to meet Sherry through her and, and the loss of her daughter. Um, but we've become very good friends and we've shared some very beautiful spiritual and healing experiences together. So as I was, um, you know, listening to Sherry speak, one that came to mind very strongly to me was a time that I was uh, just watching Touched by an Angel. It was 11 p.m. at night because it was running on that hour every night for quite a while. And I would, that would be my time to wind down. Uh, my son was in bed, the house was quiet, and I would go and I would just uh, have my good uh, a cry fest, I think, every night at 11 p.m. And so I was well into the episode, and all of a sudden I felt Nicole, who I had channeled already before for you know, her mom, uh, flash in front of my eyes, much like just seeing my hand, there it was. And she said you need to call my mom, she's having a hard time. And I immediately just, you know, it obviously moved me and I said, well, you know, Nikki, it's, you know, 11.15, 11.20. I go, I can't just call her, what if she's sleeping, you know, and I'm having this conversation, which, you know, I do and I do very naturally and, and I understand them, but this is how strong and beautiful um, Nicole Larrabee's spirit is and how natural for her to communicate because of the the love that she you know is and in, in walked with on earth and love is the key I often say yeah. and the believe in the faith of eternal life and to helping them make it, their signs easier so I basically was having this little conversation with her Nikki I just can't call your mom what if she's actually sleeping tonight I mean I knew I was seeing her maybe she was having a dream and it wasn't my place to in, invade and call it 1120 at night and I said to Nicole, because it wasn't going away, um, then you get her to me, <laughs> and I will talk to her. And it wasn't 30 seconds that I had a thing on my phone that I had gotten a message, and I looked at my phone, and in my thoughts as I was reaching was, no way. And then I looked, and it was Sherry texting me at 11.20, sorry it's so late, but I'm having such a hard Good night. Time. Well, just call I just called her and said oh my god you won't believe it <laughs> and you know the one thing that I can share in this is that her un undying faith of her daughter and the understanding of eternal life makes it easier for her daughter to do that and you know immediately you know we we talked we I'm sure we both cried <laughs> because it's very emotional to receive these messages but it's also a blessing of of gods of uh, to you know we are eternal and to be able to bring her mother that moment and mom mommy it's okay you know I am here and you know look how you know to me the power of her spirit is just it's amazing you know what I have learned about the spirit world through people of this family you know and how her daughter's passing impacted not only the the, the nucleus of their family but the communities and Here's another story. I remember I was getting uh, a tattoo done on my arm and I was in the tattoo parlor and just in that moment of getting my work done and the the man, Dan, doing my tattoo, well, all of a sudden, I felt Nicole with me and I said, do you know Nikki Larrabee? And he kept, he looks at me and he goes, well, I've tattooed her. And I go, oh, you have? And, it, and we just had this moment of, oh my God, I go, well, she's with us. And then all of a sudden he goes, holy beep. <laughs> and we look up and he goes to me, that's her boyfriend that just walked by. And he was heading into, I believe, the piercing room with the girl he was with or a friend he was with. And they were somebody was going to get a piercing. But And here we were in this moment. And I'm like, oh my God. And, you know, and you know, me and him are freaking out. And should we say something? And you know, you kind of want to respect the boundaries. But just another one of Nicole's, why I felt her. And maybe it's a good time to understand that that the spirit and the energy, when they're watching over loved ones, 
you know, that connection, that's really what it is. And she was able to just show me her beautiful smile and know that if I'm seeing her, I am meant to say it to whoever I'm sitting next to. And I did. And, and I didn't know. I don't believe I knew at the time that he had tattooed her, but I definitely found out. And communities are small, but there's a lot of tattoo artists, so, you know. And then I, I love the story about going to the grocery store, and I yeah. had my little boy with me, and I'm in the parking lot, and I'm like, I pulled in, and I'm like, I can't park here. And my son's like, Mom, why not? You know, was he like eight, seven at the time? He was little. And I, and I go, I don't know, I can't park here. And I pulled out of the parking spot, and I drove through the parking lot like three times in a circle. He goes, Mom, just park. And I go, I don't know what, I just, feel, maybe maybe we're being protected from something. I didn't know why. And all of a sudden, I just pull into this spot, and this is racer, my son goes, well, of all the spots behind this big truck, I look in the window, and it says, in memory of Nicole Larrabee. And then I'm like, oh, and I, you know, explained to him what, look, oh my God, you know the mom that, cut, you know, and I explained to him and he's like, oh my God. And then of course I called Sherry and I didn't know Brandon worked there or he was just there. He just stopped. Just yeah. happened to be at the grocery store at the same time I was that day. And you were and meant to pull behind I him. I meant to. And, you know, she obviously through emotions and, and just, the, you know, the understanding has just got me to that place. And sometimes we don't always know why. And, you know, I always say the whys are, you know, they love us. They're showing us the power of energy, how a feather can fall out of nowhere, how, a, you know, a song can come on, you know, frequency, uh, how they work with frequency. Do they really make these things, how do they make these things physically happen is pretty amazing to me even, and I see it constantly. I see it every day, uh, helping others, you know, make connection to the spirit world and, and have learned it through my own, you know, personal as well. But, you know, it's just a blessing to work with families like this and for Sherry to want to come on and, you know, let that raw emotion just come out for you all. It is the, the intention to help people understand and realize that their spirit is eternal. You can continue to have communication. You can continue to have life with them in the way, you know, you can. And in that acceptance, you open those signs. You know, you open to those signs more. They're happening, whether you know it or not. And, you know, there was one more story that was pretty... Do you remember that the, the game, the football game? And you were having your memorial for her at the ski lodge at Bristol. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I was unable to go because my son was playing football, and he was little, and it was a big tournament, and I just couldn't break his heart and not go. And... Uh, you know, it just happened to be the same day that you were holding this. It might have been the year anniversary, mm -hmm. like something like that. And so um, there I was. I had to not go, and the timing was going to cut it like I'd probably be getting out of the tournament that was 45, 50 minutes away the last hour of it. So maybe I could have made it. Very unlikely. And I remember uh, I was sitting there, and we were watching the games, and they were going on and changing squads and you texted me I'm having a really hard time so I went over and I went under a tree and I I called you back mm -hmm. and I we had a little powwow and you got your breath and you went in to do what you had to do and it was probably just getting started where you were and I walk up and I see all the kids walking up and I said to you on the in the phone call it'll yeah. take a miracle for me to get there and I'm so sorry I can't be there but my heart's there, my spirit's there with you. But it would take a miracle. And then we were—we still technically had about two hours left. It was supposed to be till like 5 p.m. And no sooner I come walking back from the tree, and I'm everybody's moving in a funny way, and I'm like, what's going on? And I don't know if my husband or somebody said, they just canceled the games. I go, what? <laughs> they said, they're done. Yep. Nobody really knows why. I go, no. <laughs> I'm like, I'm looking up going, are you kidding me? Really? We can make it. We can, I can make it. I can make it. And I didn't care why those games. All I know is we had two hours of playing. Like, yeah, it was designated to plan for the day. And they were calling those games off. There was no other reason. There was no other reason. People were looking at each other going, why are they done? You know? And there it was in... I made it, and then it was funny because by the time I got to where I had to go to get to this, you guys were already at the top of the mountain. Yep. And 
I'm driving in the parking lot going, I don't know anything about this place. Am I in the right area? And there's the truck within memory of her brother's truck, yeah. which is the same truck I saw at the grocery store maybe a few weeks before. And I went, well, I know I'm in the right place. And I ran on up and joined the joined the, the memorial. And so, like I said, is there so many miracles we could, there are stories we could share and right. share, but those three really come to mind and they brought us, they made us laugh together, they made us cry together. But I would just want to tell anybody, please don't give up. And one of the things is I, I thank this woman for, I can't, I can't even put it into words other than to know how much I love her. And because if it wasn't without her and my pastor and, um, and my family, I probably wouldn't be here today. But because she opened the doors to me, um, and it took a while, but it opened to be to receiving, to, to be open, to receive Nick, to see signs and things like that. Um, and I can't thank her enough, and she knows that what she means to me. And um, I just want to tell parents, um, anybody who's lost anybody, is, um, is, is the death of someone will put you in depression. It will put you um, so far down. But just remember to have your faith. Have your have your faith and know that they're there and um, and reach out to other people and I wouldn't know what I would do without Beth and um, and and between Beth and so many of Nikki's friends and um, with Beth being able to have this gift that God's given her to be able to share with other people she has also helped. Um, so many of Nikki's friends get through this emotional time and, and family members and it's just phenomenal and um, and I just treasure you with all my heart no, and, Thank and you. I just people just need to, to find somebody okay. that has a connection and believe and, and, and to believe. know they have their own you know and I think as mediums we should definitely always be guiding you to understand that these signs are yours to have and if yeah. we can at least guide you to understand the, the space that you can get to with it, and they're always going to be there anyway, but, you know, it is a sensitivity to emotion and thought, and the spirit is filled with the emotions and the thoughts of, you know, of the memories and of the knowings and the watchings over. So that's, you know, through families like this and, and angels like her daughter, I have learned the power of eternal life myself. So thank you. Thank you, Nicole. Yes.